the upper motor neuron in this video we'll discuss the upper motor neuron origin their pathway and their abnormalities so how many types of motor neurons are there there are two types of motor neurons the pyramidal and extra pyramidal so what's the difference between the two the pyramidal neurons have their cell bodies in the motor cortex area 4 and the association area 6 and they descend down and directly through to the spinal cord and synapse directly with the ventral horn cells lower motor neuron of the spinal cord to control inhibit the movement of the muscles whereas all other neurons which do not start from the motor cortex they are extra pyramidal there are two types of the pyramidal tracts the corticospinal and the corticobulbar tract the corticospinal tract they end up on the anterior horn of the spinal cord and the corticobulbar tract end up on the lower motor neuron of the cranial nerve nuclei in the brain stem the corticospinal tract how do they descend they descend through the posterior limb of the internal capsule and then pass through the cerebral peduncle of the midbrain and at the lower border of the medulla they decussate uh, about 80 percent of them decussate and travel on the contralateral side as the lateral corticospinal tract and end up on the ventral horn cells of the spinal cord whereas remaining 20 percent of the fibers remain ipsilateral and travel as anterior corticospinal tract the pyramidal neurons make direct monosynaptic connection with the lower motor neuron in the ventral horn the spinal cord so what are the functions of the pyramidal tract the pyramidal tracts are involved in the learn fine movements and control inhibition of the lower motor neuron the corticobulbar fibers innervate the brain stem nuclei they also arise from the primary motor cortex and end up in the brain stem on the cranial nerve nuclei and control face and neck so where a lesion in the upper motor neuron can occur it can occur in the motor cortex subcortical area internal capsule brain stem or in the spinal cord so what are the main features of upper motor neuron lesions weakness of the muscle and hypertonia hyperreflexia spasticity loss of texticity voluntary skillful movement babinski signs positive and there is loss of superficial reflexes the abdominal reflexes for example are lost there is class knife rigidity and clonus what's class knife rigidity after reaching a maximum it gives way that is class knife rigidity and what's clonus clonus is rhythmic plantar flexion and are the example of increased muscle tone due to stretch reflexes and this is because of the lesions of inhibitory supraspinal pathway in upper motor neuron the distal muscles are affected more the axial movement is spared unless the disease is bilateral the upper motor neuron affects more anti-gravity muscles flexors of the upper limb and extensors of the lower limb how about the rapid repetitive movements the rapid repetitive movements become slow but are normal example is finger nose test and shin high knee test the corticobulbar lesion what do they produce they produce weakness of the lower face and tongue only the jaw muscles are spared and what pseudo bulbar palsy bilateral lesions of the corticobulbar fiber produces pseudo bulbar palsy the clinical features are dysarthria dysphagia and dysphonia and also in emotional instability and jaw brisk jaw judge the emotional instability the patient starts laughing and crying this is known as pseudo bulbar effects so what are the causes of upper motor neuron lesions it may be a hemorrhage infarction a scar tumor or a damage from a disease like multiple sclerosis which is a demyelinating disorder or from a cerebral palsy which is due to anoxia at birth so what is the importance of internal capsule 
in the lesions of the upper motor neuron. Internal capsule is the most common site of hemorrhage and infarction. About 60% of the hemorrhage in the brain occurs in the internal capsule. The blood supply of the internal capsule is through the branches of the middle cerebral arteries, the lenticlostriate branch of the middle cerebral artery and it's the rupture of these arteries that causes upper motor neuron type of lesion or an infarction due to thickening of the blood vessels. The extrapyramidal system includes the other neurons which do not have an origin from the motor cortex or associated area and they include basal ganglia then in the midbrain there are rubro spinal tract, vestibulo spinal tract, reticulo spinal tract, tecto spinal tract, olivo spinal tract. What's the function of the tecto spinal tract and where does it derive? The tecto spinal tract arises from the tectum of the midbrain and control movement of the head, neck and eyes. The reticulo spinal tract is of two types reticular activating tract and reticular inhibitory tract. The extrapyramidal bulbospinal fiber influence the tone and strength and are divided into two groups the ventromedial group and a ventrolateral group. The ventromedial group includes tectospinal, vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tract and influence the proximal and axial muscles and maintains posture. And number two, the ventrolateral group include the rubrospinal tract and that facilitates the distal limb movements. What are different types of reticulospinal tract that control the muscle movement? Where do they arrive and what's their function? The reticulospinal tract that controls the muscle functions originate from the reticular formation in the brain stem and they facilitate or inhibit the voluntary muscle activity. There are two groups of the reticulospinal tract. They arise one from pons and other from the medulla. The one that arises from the pons is excitatory and it excites the alpha and gamma motor neuron of the spinal cord and runs down to the spinal cord as medial reticulospinal tract. The other that arises from the medulla runs as lateral medullary spinothalamic tract and has a strong inhibitory effects on alpha and gamma motor neurons.